Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we'll explore the easy to miss proof of the many gray foxes. Also, how you can fortify acrobatics by 50 forever. And can you beat this quest before it even starts? To explore these questions and more, we must first begin the quest, The Boots of Spring Hill Jack, which after completing the arrow of extrication for the gray fox, we note in our journal, when I'm in the cities, I'll have to keep an eye out for another messenger from the Grey Fox. He could call for me at any time. I should wait in the Imperial City if I want them to find me quickly. Waiting for our contact down in the waterfront by a poster of the infamous thief, several hours pass before a familiar figure approaches. I have another message from the Grey Fox. You must be very important. I'm you say. It's good to see you again. What is the message? The Grey Fox requests a meeting. Please travel to Ganradel's house in Shadenhall. May Shadow hide you. Our quest then updates. Amusei has given me another message from the Grey Fox. I'm to meet him at Ganradel's house in Shadenhall. Dutifully entering the dark and dreary Dunmer settlement, past the abandoned house near the East Gate, we bump into the Bosma who informs. The Grey Fox is inside. I wouldn't keep him waiting if I were you. Inside her abode, we're flanked by two dogs, Daisy and Luna, and the Grey Fox sits by a fire and urges. Have a seat, please. Before we're seated, we take one glance at the dogs' beds in the corner and see what appears to be human femurs. Mentally noting not to act aggressive near the dogs, we sit by the master thief and he begins. Come. We have much to discuss. You know, I hate to say it, but giant dogs kind of put me on edge. Why not just have your messenger tell me what you need? I hate being summoned like this. I have no patience for impertinence. Maybe I should reconsider what I was about to offer you. No, no. Money is always welcome. Trust me, I'm eager to hear your plan. Further use of Sevilla's stone has revealed that I need another special item to move forward with my plans. I need the boots of Springheel Jack. He is a famous thief that died some 300 years ago. Legend has it that he was buried with his boots on. Find out where Springheel Jack is buried and bring me back those boots. Will you do this for me? It pays well. We can then reply, buried boots? I think I might need more time to prepare. This task can wait, at least for a little while. Return when you are ready. Or a cheeky bit of grave robbing. You better believe I'm ready. Capital. The Earl of Imbel is the only descendant of his line that I've been able to locate. His name is Jockbin, and he lives somewhere in the Imperial City. There might be a clue in the Earl's house. Shadow hide you. Although we have questions about our mission, when approaching the Grey Fox for a second time, he dismisses. Not now. I need to think. Canradel then enters a home complimenting. You look like a bright one. We then catch the Bosma saying, It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, uh, Ganradel, was it? Ganradel. I train dogs. And people. Prefer dogs. People. I teach them advanced acrobatics. Up and jump. Dogs. I teach them to bite people. It looks like those who don't jump quite high enough are further incentivized by dogs biting at their shin bones. Say, Ganradel, what do you think of Chadenhall? You got your people and you got your dogs. Dogs are loyal and stupid. People are smart and devious. I'll stick with dogs. Farewell. Accurate assessment. I can see why the Grey Fox likes her. Leaving before her pooches get hungry, we note in our journal. The Grey Fox has asked me to find out where Spring Hill Jack is buried. This famous thief died 300 years ago. He's rumored to have owned a pair of magical boots. The story also says he was buried in those boots. A relative of his, Jackman, Earl of Imbel, lives somewhere in the Imperial City. What is it, citizen? Knowing the beggars are our best bet at ferreting out this Earl of Imbel, we travel to the city's Arboretum 
to the northeast is our old friend Lothyar the laggard, slumbering without a care in the world until we rouse him. I can eat for a day with a single coin. Hello, Lothyar. I'm actually looking to find Jackman, the Earl of Imble. I assume you've heard of him. I know of him. Would you, uh, loan me a few coins? Come, come now, old boy, I don't think so. You can drop your beggar act. Or have you forgotten who saved you from that cell in Skingrad when you were one scamp hair from becoming vampire food? I heard he moved to Bruma. I'd look for him there. Fine. Forget it. Have ten gold coins on me. You are most gracious. The Earl of Imbil has a home in the Talos Plaza, facing the center plaza. He's an odd one, keeps to himself mostly, only goes out after dark, a real night owl. Blessings of Julianus upon ye. Catching Lathia's true voice momentarily, as he goes back down for his nap, we can't help but wonder if that fake voice malarkey has ever truly helped the beggars, or just made them look foolish to tourists, as they can seldom keep their act straight. Pondering this, we depart the Arboretum to the Talos Plaza district. Arriving under the watchful eye of the imposing dragon statue depicting Akatosh, we soon locate the Earl's Manor and an Imperial commoner waltzes out the front door. Intercepting him, he questions. What can I do for you? Hey, sorry. I'm trying to find Jackman, the Earl of Imbel, and noticed you just wandered out of his house. What relation are you to the Count? I am Gemelus Axius, his servant. Master Imbel has his home facing the central plaza of the Talos Plaza district. He is a very private man and does not leave his home often. He has a rare skin condition that forces him to sleep during the day. If you wish to contact him, wait until nightfall. Even then, I doubt he will receive you. Skin condition? Like an albino? I think I'd remember seeing one of those about the city. <laughs> the Earl is perhaps not well known in the city. He's a private man and keeps to himself. You too. Now in search of the creamy Count, we see we were correct about the entrance to his abode, but the door is locked tight. Maybe Gemelus is right. And so we duck in the brush across from his home, waiting for the Count to come out for his evening constitutional. Just past the stroke of ten, the unmistakably pasty Earl leaves his home, and we vault over the stone slab separating us, and spark a torch in our haste, as the Count somehow precognitively knows we approach and casually greets. How do you do? Jack Ben, Earl of Imbel. We do not know one another. And given your modest social standing, I doubt we ever shall. It's so kind of you to favor me with your attention. Uh, please excuse me if I seem unappreciative of the honor. Was I insufficiently clear? I beg your pardon. You do not interest me. We will not be having further social discourse. Left to take in his unseemly pallor and social barbs, the Count departs on his nightly stroll, and we are free to return to his manor, veiled in darkness, as we fiddle with his unnecessarily hard lock until we hear the satisfying click of success. Inside the Breton's spacious sanctum, we find ourselves in a lightly furnished foyer. To our left and right are stone stairs to the rooms above, and we make haste to the eastern staircase to plumb the hopefully unguarded basement. Deep inside said basement, among the wine cellar and clutter, we find no sign of a burial site, except a strange, breezy, ramshackle door leading to supposed catacombs below. Unable to break the lock without a key, we once again hunt down the Count's manservant, Gemelus, for more details. Ascending the stairs to the second floor, we find ourselves in his living quarters, and unlocking the first door to our left reveals Axius's private quarters. Nestled in a nook, the Imperial sleeps soundly, and we lightly lift off his person, 
121 gold, and the Imbal house key, though notably he holds no key to the catacombs. Also of note, Gemellus was meant to have specific dialogue about said key when interrogating him about Spring Hill Jack, which was... Thief! Help! Please, don't harm me. What is it you want? I'm looking for the crypt of Spring Hill Jack. I don't know this Spring Hill you're asking about. However, the entrance to the family crypt is in the cellar. Take what you want. Just spare me. Only the Earl has a key. I've been warned never to enter it. On pain of death, he is somewhere in the house. Flee, thief, while you still have the chance. Take care. So the Earl has the key, eh? Imbel must really take out his albino rage on Gemellus. Well, we can tell he's all bluster. Searching the room adjacent for the Count's quarters, we find instead a private study which we can unlock thanks to the Imbel's residence key. Inside, we find no signs of the Count or a key, However, his library suggests he does have somewhat of an interest in the Thieves' Guild. In the next room over, we find ourselves in a spacious dining hall with expensive silverware lining the shelves and supper ready on the dining table for the Count and perhaps a handful of guests. But the guests are nowhere in sight. To our right, by a smaller, more intimate setting, we see a human skull displayed openly on a corner shelf and do not like what this possibly portends. Making haste, we then climb the steep steps to Jackman's personal study, which we unlock again thanks to his servant's key. Inside, we scan the musty, cobweb-infused, high-domed room. Reaching past the handful of wines on his desk, we slip our hand inside his jewellery box for good measure. Pilfering some valuables, we then notice his desk is also locked tight. Inside, all we find is a bowl and inkwell, but perhaps most importantly, a book on Imbal genealogy, which respectably reads, The Imbal family traces lineage strictly through the male line of heirs, as any right-thinking noble would. Therefore, this family genealogy does not record the inconsequential female offspring. We then peruse a litany of direct descendants and bastards that oddly stops abruptly a few hundred years back. Our quest then updates. I found a book of Imbel family genealogy. No mention of Spring Hill Jack's burial location. Maybe the Earl himself can tell me with a little friendly... persuasion. It should also be noted this book and when you find it is integral to learning more about the multiple grey foxes which we will investigate later. Departing the study, we find our quarry has strolled into his dining room as we descend the stairs, and with a dumbfounded realisation, he cowers. What do you want? I'll do anything you ask. Listen to me, you are feet, Earl. I want what's in Spring Hill Jack's tomb. Don't make this ugly. Take everything. Just spare me. Just answer my question. The family crypts are under the house. They give me the creeps. I have the key. Take it. Just don't hurt me. I'm... I'm still alive. Bewildered, Jackman scurries into his study to no doubt hide and our journal updates. <laughs> what luck! The family mausoleum for the Imbles is in the basement of Jackman's house. The poor Earl was so terrified, he told me everything I needed to know. He even gave me the key. Now to find those boots delving into the unlit catacombs. We immediately see a figure stalking ahead. Dowsing our torch, we crouch and loose an arrow at a charging skeleton. Breathing a sigh of relief, the skeleton begins to reform in an unholy act of retribution, and we destroy the foul revenant once and for all. Now, wary... Poor Jackman's family crypt is haunted. We slowly edge forward, looking at a side tunnel momentarily and see figures of... Before we can react, another skeleton bashes our flank. Come to me, sweet flesh. This ends here. Sweet flesh. You're pathetic. Ooh. 
burning the fiends, we see that they react to fire violently and also see they're not cannibals, grave robbers, or even Jackman's re-risen family. But vampires? Why would such foul creatures be in his crypt? Looting the fiends, we then begin to search the nearby coffins, and after exploring each wing of the tomb, head north in here. Who's there? Unlocking the wooden door, a skeleton hero bears down on us, followed by a large orc wielding a two-handed glass mace. Yeah! Do your worst! Downing the orc with an arrow, we focus on the skeleton and are then hit in the midsection by a ferocious lick of lightning. We then take out the skeleton hero as the orc taunts. I'm going to bleed you slow. Backing up into their nest, we drive our Dramora blade hard into the ghoul's guts. Seeing this was no mere vampire whelp, but instead their matriarch, did they too covet the boots of Springhill Jack? Does the Earl even know what's below his house? Deciding at best to keep moving, we enter the final eastern room and locate Spring Hill's resting place. Expecting a vampire to burst forth from his coffin, we pry open the lid and then see... Boots were not in the tomb of Spring Hill Jack. I did find a diary though. Maybe it can provide a clue. Opening the musty diary, it reads... I knew a man who was a great thief. He dared steal from Nocturnal herself. How odd that I cannot seem to recall his name. I think we were friends, but I'm not certain. In three days, I will venture into Taran's crypt. Grave robbing alone is dangerous. Maybe I should try to find a partner. Didn't I once know a great thief? I begin this second entry in the second volume of my diary on a momentous day. Actually, it is night. The night where my second life begins. It will be forever night for me. I have become one of the children of the night. A son to Mother Wolf and brother to Bat. I am Nosferatu, a vampire. Tonight is the first night of the rest of eternity. I rediscover this diary today. It's been 13 years since I last wrote in it. With an eternity before and the blood hunger ever pulsing in my veins, there is little urgency for diaries or much of anything. Amelia is calling to me. I must go. Has it really been 89 years since I last wrote? The pages are getting fragile. I have rediscovered purpose. Though it took nearly a century, I finally gained some control over the blood frenzy. I think I will try to establish a life among the living in one of their great cities. I had forgotten about this diary. I won't bother to calculate how many decades it's been since I last wrote in it. The cattle of this city know me as Jackman, Earl of Imble. Centuries ago, I knew myself as spring Hill Jack, the famous thief. I seem to recall having a famous partner, but his name escapes me. No matter. I've grown beyond friends and partners. I rule the night here in the city. After discovering this shocking revelation, a journal then updates. I've read Jack Benimble's diary, or should I say, Spring Hill Jack's diary. Now I understand why the boots were not in the tomb. Why bury such a valuable item when you can wear it? Even more shocking, it seems, that Spring Hill Jack may have known the Grey Fox himself. They may have been partners in crime several centuries ago. As we turn to leave the crypt in search of this vampire Jackpin, a menacing figure appears in the doorway and taunts. Showing your face was the last mistake you'll ever make. Who? Fool. I am no effete noble. I am a vampire, a lord of blood. Die, damn you. Realizing the whole sissy noble act was for show, we slash at his summons 
and hit Jack with her own burning blade, <laughs> which yeah. we've learned is deadly Die. to vampires, oh. and quickly Rah. slammed the door between us and our inevitable death at the hands of his glass great sword. As we're backed into the crypt's entrance, we let loose a final arrow and- What's the matter? Getting tired? <laughs> Miss. Yet, poor Jackman's corpse crumples backwards in a hideous contortion. We then realized the fire was slowly burning him from within, retrieving his glass claymore as our own and his fancy mithril armor plus 846 gold. We end up lifting the boots of the fallen vampire and our quest updates. I have the boots now to get back to the Grey Fox in Ganradell's house in Chaden Hall. Before we hand over said boots and explore their peculiar properties, there are a few things to note about our fallen friend Springheel Jack, whose body lay slack before us. The first is obviously Jack was a vampire, but let's pretend his appearance wasn't a dead giveaway as soon as we met him. There is an amazing reference left by the developers to be found. Hey, See, help. if we'd spoken to his manservant about Jackpin when intruding, we could ask, Please, don't harm me. What is it you want? Where is your master? The master is not at home. He is out in the city tonight, searching for his supper. If you value your life, intruder, leave before he returns. Congruently, Jackman was supposed to hunt for supper on Maundus, Midas, and Fredus, but a bug stopped him from doing so. However, the unofficial patch restores his nighttime stalking of prey, as he can be found in a nearby garden with his claymore at the ready. But then that begs the question, can you simply steal the boots, opting to spare the head vampire? Well, I waited until Jack was out for a bite during the evening. However, you cannot steal the boots off his person because he doesn't actually seem to wear them, and though aesthetically it does appear so. So, like the Grey Fox's mask bug, I was forced to turn Jack hostile via frenzy spell. What's the matter? Getting tired? Then, when he'd regained his composure, waited until his back was turned, and voila, we have his boots. Now, if you're wondering, can I steal the shoes before the quest even begins? The answer is yes. As soon as we receive the quest from the Grey Fox, we can then simply inform him that we already have the boots. However, only if the unofficial patch is installed. Otherwise, it's likely to break your game. I'm sorry. Bounding to the next fun fact, if you're a fan of folklore, these stylish boots of Spring Hill Jack offer a whopping plus 50 to acrobatics, and if you equip them, then hand in the quest to the Grey Fox, you may actually retain the enchantment permanently. Now, if you're also wondering why Jack specifically could bounce like a flea, it's evident Jackman, Earl of Imble, was given a clever name on purpose, as by removing the appellation of Earl of and spaces from his name, you're left with Jack Benimble. Divided properly, it reads as Jack B. Nimble, as the famous thief spring Jack is a reference to spring Jack, a character from English folklore, as his unique boots would be quite useful for jumping over candlesticks. Or better yet, as explained by rapper Eminem. Cause you can be quick, jump the candlestick, burn your back and f*** Jill on a hill, but you still ain't Jack. Once the quest is concluded and before we visit the Grey Fox, it should be noted, being a high-profile murder in the Imperial City, the Black Horse Courier will report. Vampire Nest in the City A newspaper article on the discovery of a vampire lair in the heart of the Imperial City. A nest of vampires was recently discovered in the home of the Earl of Imble. The Courier is shocked to learn that Earl Jackpin, a local noble of previously unblemished reputation, is revealed to have been one of these vampires. Responding to a tip by the Earl's servant, the Imperial Watch raided the Imble estate and slew all of the foul creatures. Captain Quintillus has categorically denied the rumors that most of the terrible creatures of the night were already dead by the time the Watch arrived. However, residents of the Imperial City can be heard gossiping. Did you hear that the Earl of Imbel's house was robbed? And more accurately... The Earl of Imbel was attacked and killed in his own home. I heard the body burned in the sunlight. Finally, we then return to Genradel in Chadenhall, and she informs outside her home. He's waiting inside. The Grey Fox seems very anxious to see you. 
go inside. Inside, the grey fox gestures. Have a seat, please. I assume you found Springheel Jack's tomb. Boots of the Springheel Jack is right. Do you have the boots? We can then lie. Um, <laughs> look at my feet. No, I don't. Don't waste my time. I'm not in the mood for it. Otherwise, slipping off the springy sandals. Well, here you go. Here are the boots. Capital. This may be the last piece of the puzzle. I need to spend more time with Sevilla Stone first. I am truly indebted to you. If all goes well, I may call upon you for one last task. The danger will be great, but the reward will be greater. For now, here is your reward. Let us leave Gondredal's house and go our separate ways. We have overstayed our welcome. The Grey Fox then shoes. You have work to do. Go on. Get out of here. However, there is one question that popped up that we missed and will not return if we don't address it in the first dialogue with the Grey Fox, and only will pop up if we'd actually picked up the Imbul genealogy book. Regardless, we can then inform the Master Thief. You know, we learn of Jack's true identity and that he's over 300 years old. Plus, he used to be your partner, no less. When were you going to tell us that you were a contemporary of Spring Hill Jack? Did I know him personally? Of course not! He lived 300 years ago! But the diary mentions you. He even forgot your name as you had said the Grey Fox's curse to be forgotten. Ah, it seems you have stumbled over a bit of history that few in the Thieves' Guild ever discover. I am not the first Grey Fox. That Master Thief died sometime shortly after stealing the Grey Cow and receiving Nocturnal's curse. However, another thief in the guild picked up the cow and assumed his identity, and the curse. No one in the guild knew it was a different person. Over the centuries, there have been dozens of Grey Foxes. To the rest of the world, he seems immortal and unchanging. I am hoping to be the last. Our quest then ends on the burning question to be concluded in the final episode. I learned that the Grey Fox is not immortal. The Grey Cow of Nocturnal has been passed from Master Thief to Master Thief for close to 300 years now. The original thief that stole it from Nocturnal is long dead. So, who is the current Grey Fox?